welcome to another video. I try to cover all the latest happenings in the AI space in separate videos, but I obviously can't cover everything that way. So, I'm starting this AI news series where I'll try to cover the latest AI news from the week. Anyway, let's dive right into what happened this week. First up is QSTAR by OpenAI, also codenamed Strawberry. QSTAR is rumored to be a high-level AGI model being developed by OpenAI and has been in the spotlight for some time now. Recently, Sam Altman hinted at it on Twitter by sharing a post of strawberries with the caption, I love summer in the garden, leading people to speculate that this was a hint toward the strawberry or Q-star model, suggesting it might be released this summer. To add to the buzz, a cryptic Twitter account began posting claims like, Level 2 has been achieved, with Sam Altman even replying, saying he feels great. Many believed this account was legitimate because of Sam Altman's interaction, and it gained about 15,000 followers in just a few days. However, it turned out to be a troll account, as the predicted release didn't happen. It said that all this marketing was done to divert attention from internal issues at OpenAI, which brings us to our next story. Almost every top leader or co-founder of OpenAI is on sabbatical or has left the company. It's reported that Greg Brockman, OpenAI's president, and other co-founders are on an extended leave, with some even leaving to join rival company Anthropic. This makes me question where OpenAI is really headed. Now, the next story is also about OpenAI. They've launched a new version of their GPT-4.0 model, which is much cheaper for inference, and now supports structured JSON object output, making it pretty reliable if you're using it in applications and need a specifically structured JSON output. The lower cost is great too. Anyway, that's not the only model that's now cheaper. Google has also announced that their cheapest Gemini Flash model is now even more affordable than before. It now costs just seven cents per million tokens for input and 30 cents for output, which is really cheaper than before. The pricing of the Gemini Flash model is now on par with DeepSeek, which is very cool. Plus, the Gemini Flash has multimodal capabilities, making it the cheapest model with such capabilities. Which brings me to the next topic, Mini CPM V2. This is the new Mini CPM model that claims to outperform the GPT-4 vision model in single image, multi-image, and video understanding. It also outperforms GPT-4 O Mini and Gemini 1.5 on Open Compass, which is wild. This is a fully open source model and a very small 8 billion parameter model based on the Quen 2 model. I haven't tested it yet because it isn't available on a llama, which makes it unusable for most of us. If you want, you can go ahead and test it out and share the results in the comments. I'm waiting for it to be available on a llama. The next topic is Flux. Flux is a new text-to-image model by Black Forest Labs, a new company formed by ex-stable diffusion researchers. This new model is really good. It can generate text, good fingers, good anatomy, and overall really great pictures. There are three models in the Flux launch. A pro model, a dev model, and a Schnell model. The Schnell model is fully open source with an Apache license. The dev model is open source but has a non-commercial license, and the pro model is the best but is not open source. You can check out more in the video I made explaining everything about it and how to use it. Now, the next topic is the Claude outage. Recently, Claude 3.5 Sonnet had a major outage where the API wasn't accessible due to insufficient computational power. This outage lasted quite a while, but was ultimately fixed by Anthropic's team. It seems they spent all their money hiring OpenAI's employees. 
Next up is a story from Alibaba's Quen team. Some days ago, Quen 2 was launched, which performed very well in benchmarks and real-world usage. But now, they have released another model, Quen 2 Math. As the name suggests, these new Quen models are trained for math-related tasks. There are three models in this launch. All of them are performing great in math benchmarks, which is pretty amazing. I haven't tested them since I'm not great at math. They've also launched an audio language model called Quen 2 Audio, which is trained on audio. You can give it an audio speech or file, and it can do various things with it, which is pretty cool. Now, the next story is about a new mystery LLM on LMSI's arena called Suscolum R, which is apparently good at reasoning, but not very great. If you remember my secret LLM video where I tested four LLM models that were dropped on the arena, I also covered the Column R model. Now, it's an updated version of that model, I believe. Many are speculating that this might be GPT-5, but I don't think so. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. There are also two new models on the LMSI's arena, Gemini Test and an anonymous chatbot. I haven't tested them yet, but they are new, so check them out if you want. Anyway, the next story is about a new LLM by LG. Yes, the same LG that makes fridges and stuff. They've released a new open-source LLM with about 8 billion parameters that beats Llama, 3.1, Phi 3, and others, which is pretty cool. The next topic is about a new text-to-speech model, Parler TTS. It's a new text-to-speech model with both a smaller and a larger version, which could be cool to try out. There was also a new Figure 2 robot launch that looks kind of cool, and it's backed by OpenAI and has GPT integration, which is also quite cool. Another thing that happened was that Google has bought Character AI's employees and technology, but didn't buy the company. Google has made a licensing deal that allows them to access their technology and 20% of Character AI's employees. It's a very new kind of deal. As part of the agreement, Character AI's CEO will be joining Google DeepMind's research team, though his specific role remains undisclosed. The deal includes a non-exclusive licensing arrangement allowing Google to use Character AI's large language model, LLM technology. Anyway, the next story is by Mitral. They've launched their Agents feature, which allows you to create specific agents with custom system prompts, similar to OpenAI's custom GPT, which is also quite cool if you use their API or want to use it. Another thing that happened is that NVIDIA's Blackwell chips have been delayed. The Blackwell chip is supposed to be a new AI-focused chip by NVIDIA, better for inference and training. Microsoft, Meta, and Google have already ordered more than 50,000 of these chips, but they aren't able to get them due to architectural and production issues, which means NVIDIA may face some financial loss as well. Another story is that Llama 4 will require about 10 times the compute power that Llama 3 needed since they obviously want to make it much better than the previous iterations which is kind of cool. I think they must be waiting for those NVIDIA chips that have been delayed. Another thing is that OpenAI released the model card for GPT-40, showing details of its safety analysis. And it has been found that it's so good that people can get quite addicted to it and start forming emotional connections. They also found that sometimes GPT-40 can start mimicking the user's voice on its own, which is quite scary, to say the least. So, that's basically the latest and major news that I found this week. Also, let me give you the tool of the week. The tool of the week for me is ClawDev and Flux. ClawDev is super cool if you use AI for coding or generating applications. It's like a VS Code extension that plugs right into your VS Code, and you can configure it with Claude, 
3.5 Sonnet to generate applications and write code, which is kind of cool. You can check out my full video on it. Another tool of the week is Flux. It's the best image generator, and I'm almost using it daily. So, check that out as well. I have videos on it too. That's the gist of everything that happened this week. Overall, AI has been pretty cool this week. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider taking up a membership on my channel through the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.